Hello, this is April 1st, and this is the Charter Revision Committee. We have a quorum, and we're going to be discussing Resolution RS-2019-1617. I'll turn it over to Dave. Um, so, the, this is the, um, this Charter Resolution now has five amendments on it. Um, I'm going to ask the committee, um, since the hope is to vote on this resolution at the next council meeting next week, uh, in two weeks, um, just in case we have trouble getting a quorum at the next Charter Revision Committee meeting, um, I'm going to ask at the end that we vote on this and re-refer it so that we can look at anything that happens in the next two weeks at the last second, but still fulfill our rules in case we don't have a, a quorum to vote next time. Um, the first amendment, Amendment A, uh, is the ranked choice voting amendment, the full-on ranked choice voting amendment. Um, we've um, filed an amendment to Amendment A um, that I'll ask to put on. It makes a few small changes. Um, excuse me, that was a different bill. Um, it adds um, a definition for uh, repugnancy with state law. It, even though we had tiebreaker language in the resolution before, this adds a in the case that there's no possible way to break a tie, the Metro Council will break the tie, which is the way it works now. And lastly, um, <coughs> updated the ballot language to be a little more English and a little bit less legalese. Um, so I'd like to make a motion to put that amendment, the amendment to Amendment A, onto the resolution. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, and then I'm open to any discussion on Amendment A, or I can go back through it again if folks would like. Um, so the when this when it goes to the council, or we're voting for just the bill with whatever uh, charter amendments are in there. Or are we voting we for? We get to vote on each one separately. Each amendment itself needs 27 votes, and then the underlying resolution needs underlying resolution, which at that point will contain whatever amendments got 27 votes, will itself need 27 so, votes. So if I persisted in the liking B better than A, voting for it in the committee just gives the council a chance to think about A and B both? Right. Okay. Thanks. Has the Charter Commission said anything on this? They're meeting next Friday. Gotcha. So we'll have an opportunity, when we re-refer, re we'll have an opportunity to discuss their comments further. Any other questions? And I'll move approval of Amendment A. Second. All in favor? Aye. Amendment A passes. Amendment B, thank you, is a backup in case the council does not like, uh, or we come up with 26 votes instead of 27 for Amendment A. Amendment B uh, just implements ranked choice voting for special elections for vice mayor and special elections for district council and would not affect the election in four years. Um, and there's an amendment to Amendment B that does the exact same thing to Amendment B that the amendment to Amendment A did. So I'd like to move approval of um, the, the amendment to Amendment B. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes. Do any discussion on Amendment B? Did you try as hard on Amendment B as you did on A? <laughs> <laughs> I did. Oh. Yes. Made sure that all those changes transferred out. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Move approval of Amendment B. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Amendment B passes. Now we're on Amendment C, which is Councilmember Cooper's. Well, and uh, thank you. I'm joined by Councilmember Mendez also, and I'm appreciative to the uh, Mayor's Office and to Mike Jamison and to Councilman Mendez for um, 
using the process to improve um, the amendment and to where I think it's increasingly clean and understandable. And again, is Margaret here or I see John is I here. I am here. Margaret had to leave. Well, I'm grateful for her help on this and to Mike's. And so, again, I think um, I'm grateful to everybody for, again, making this um, smoother. So I'll, I'll move the amendment to Amendment C. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And then Amendment C as amended. And well, happy what's the, yeah, I'm just curious what, what changed substantive, substantively. Okay, so, um, so last time we had a bunch of questions um, that had to do with how do we talk about uh, the commercial paper program, how do we talk about um, uh, the revenue bonds, um, how do we talk about you know, regular payables, you know, buying paper and stuff, um, and payroll, and and what do we want to include, and how do we make sure we use the right words, and and the idea was um, uh, debt that is backed by the full faith and credit of Metro, so not revenue bonds, yes, commercial paper, not regular payables, and the words in here um, uh, reflect, um, especially in um, E, um, reflect. Uh, finance, legal, bond council, Jameson, Cooper, Mendez, all agreeing on a set of words to accomplish that concept that I described generally. And then um, A, you'll, you may recognize um, as the same thing um, John, uh, Councilman Cooper had in the last version, just moved to a different spot. And then B, C, and D um, are a um, all those same people I just mentioned: um, finance, legal, bond council, Jameson, Cooper, Mendez, um, agreed on words to stick a little bit of what we get in the annual treasurer's report into the um, uh, budget book, also. And so, some the basic info is showing people how much is the debt that's outstanding at the time of the budget book and comparing it to the previous year and what it means per capita. Um, the charter would require that that stuff made it into the budget book. And some of the thinking is that, like, okay, right now we've got a nice ordinance and a cooperative finance department that's giving us a really nice annual debt report, but it's like 65 pages long and sort of mind-numbing, if you want to. I find it fascinating, but mind-numbing <laughs> for a lot of people. And this would say, even if for some reason that ordinance went away or finance stopped doing that someday in the future, the, the charter would always require the basic, here's the debt, here's how it compares to last year, here's how it compares per capita. Um, and, um, and and have a summary of the total amount that's owed, um, and the charter would require that. I'll tell you guys that um, the uh, net of that conversation was that um, I think we're going to have a, a ordinance um, that comes along later that um, tweaks um, the law that requires a debt report. There's some stuff that Tali has put in there the last couple of years that's not actually required um, by the current ordinance, things that um, at least Councilman Cooper and I like. And so we're going to um, ask to have that ordinance change to basically reflect what Tali has been putting in the last couple of years, which is good information. Okay. And I know this, um, you can say some of this is being done in various different places, but the changes here are actually material change in reporting because if this were done last June it'd be seven hundred and fifty million dollars of commercial paper that it'd be recognized in debt and really a billion one in obligated but not yet issued bonds. So together it's really it's it's a correct financial picture of the glide path to the city's indebtedness that really has not been in the front of mind in the past. So it seems like a small thing, but in fact, that's a that's a material change in front of mind reporting. And right now, you go to the geo table in the CAFR, which has a per capita analysis, but does not include this, in effect, billion eight of additional obligated spending, either through commercial paper, which will have to be refinanced into a bond, or 
waiting to be bonded that we have already appropriated through the capital spending plan. I have a question, and this is not meant to um, uh, wait into y'all's hard work, but I had a question to, is, does it currently require the budget to include payments f f on debt for future years that we're already obligated for? And if not, could we include that? For instance, you know, it, you know, this is what we have to pay this year, but just so you know, as we obligate operating revenue this year, our debt could, payments could be, you know, going up the next few years, or it could be going down. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. Um, there is a table circulated by finance. I'm not, I don't believe it's formally part of the operating budget book, and that would be an effect. Yeah. That's a very good question. It's um, in the, it's in the CAFR. It was. The, which is the audit. Um, I mean, but not the out year projections that you're talking about. I mean, I mean, to your point, those, these are all things that are readily available, but to put them into one document, like one. Yeah all-encompassing, you know, these are the most important information you need for the budget. Right. And, uh, and it may not necessarily need to go in here. If it can be taken care of by ordinance, that's fine. Uh, you know, I don't necessarily want to try to micromanage in the charter, but I think that would be, could be good information. But your thought have. is to include an additional clause saying including out your estimates of debt service payments. Uh -huh. And again, I don't, I don't want to mess this up, but if it can, if it can be taken care of by ordinance, that's fine. I don't want to. Well, it's still, I think, out there for discussion. Well, you know, David has, you know, we're re referring this back to the committee. I mean, it is open to a further amendment as. Can, can we can amend time. this on third? It's a resolution. Yes, it's because it's a resolution. Yes, but it could probably be taken care of in the ordinance that you're talking about, right? It could right? definitely yes. be taken care of in the ordinance. That right, that's, that's fine. Mm -hmm. That would be good. The, the not to, I know you got to get to a community meeting. Um, the. The thing in the weeds that I, I, I never love about the chart that Councilman Cooper refers to is that, so there is a chart somewhere that shows how much uh, bond payments will be in future years, um, but it um, it's always put together from the perspective of all new bonding stops. So it's not really, because it, it always shows the debt yeah, okay. usually tailing off. Um, and then <coughs> that's from the assumption we're not issuing any more debt. Right. If you okay. or ever spend another capital dollar. Right. And, okay. and, and it would be a little unfair to try to put that in there because who knows what sure. people are going to approve or not approve. Um, but so I, I always find that of, uh, you know, once it gets beyond like a couple years out, I, I don't find it super helpful. Um, uh, but and so, may, so maybe the ordinance as opposed to the. No, that's fine. That, that's fine. That's, I agree. This sounds like something okay. more for the ordinance. That's that's fine. Mm -hmm. I'll mm -hmm. I'll read that, the ordinance then at that time. I don't want to get into this. Yeah. Please do that. Yeah. Be good. That would be good. Any more questions? Can we move it. Amendment C. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Amendment C passes. Amendment D. That's me. Um, Amendment D uh, kind of came about, I came up with this like two years ago and I've just never had a chance to really try to bring it to the Charter Commission before her committee. Um, I realized, I started looking back over the Planning Commission, I realized that most of the members of the Planning Commission seem to come from the downtown core or West Nashville or 18, around there. So I always thought to myself, how would any of Planning Commission when bills come before them about developments that are in District 1 or Forest Hills or Bellevue or Antioch or Hermitage or Old Hickory, how would they ever know what, what they're talking about? So I thought that representation on the Planning Commission should represent the county as a, law, as a whole. And so Mike and I kind of sat down, we had a discussion about what's the best way to kind of split it up. So you have 10 Planning Commissioners. We decided that I think by state law, and I think uh, Attorney Cooper and Mike both looked at it, by state law, the, the mayor has to appoint to the Planning Commission. But what we did was we have 35 council districts. We split it up by seven planning districts. So that would include five district council, uh, council districts for each planning district. And so we split them up into seven different districts. And I kind of, I'll run through these just so y'all can kind of hear them so you'll kind of get in your mind. So there's districts one, two, three, nine, and 10. 
which are all up in the northern part of the county. 5, 6, 7, 8, 19, that's East Nashville, Madison, and downtown. 11, 12, 13, 14, 50, that's all Donaldson, Hermitage, Old Hickory. 16, 17, 18, 21, 25, that's all south of downtown. 4, 26, 27, 30, and 34, that's all south of the county. 20, 22, 23, 24, and 35, that's all West Nashville down to Bellevue. And then 28, 29, 31, 32, and 33, that's all the Antioch area. So what that would do is the mayor, it wouldn't happen immediately as planning commissioners start falling off, the mayor would start appointing from these planning districts. So you would ultimately at the end have seven planning districts. The mayor has appointed seven people, but they represent the entire county. So when you have a bill come up, whether it be in Hermitage or Bellevue, there's someone on that planning commission who actually knows the area of town that they're talking about when the bill is being presented to them. It's just not someone from downtown saying, well, I've heard of that part of town, but I've never been out there before. So, uh, you know, and that's what we're trying to do is make sure that the county is represented on the planning commission. The mayor still gets to a point. He has two at large. So if he feels like there's one area of town, whether it be downtown or some part of town that's busy and he feels like we need some planning commissioners from that area, he still has the ability to appoint those. And then we still have the one council member. So that's what this is doing. Uh, Mike helped out with the language, and I think it's a good change, and I hope y'all will support it. So, so what happens after redistricting? Uh, Mike... Uh, wrote the language at the end that says the planning districts here and established may be altered in a plan for redistricting council manic districts adopted pursuant to the section 18.06 of the charter any altered planning district shall attempt to preserve the geographic boundaries of these initial planning districts while keeping council manic districts intact so that, that was Mike's language to when when they change it that we you try to keep the areas, you know, it's going to be by council district, unless they do what they did however long ago it was when they did district four. Yeah, when you create new districts. That's, you know, if you change just the whole well. then, but then that's when, um, and I guess that's the question, we still have the question of, and I was going to ask Mike about this because he did the language, um, as far as who would redo these, Mike, if it changes a little? Say it changed, I mean. So the, the numbers you see specified here in terms of which planning districts uh, constituted by which council districts, <coughs> you may notice that the charter also specifies council districts that compose school board districts that no longer applies, that did not survive redistricting attempts afterwards. Um, as long as the outlet is there, um, that, that's not fatal to the, the charter provision. The same applies here with redistricting um, coming up after the next census on the horizon. These numbers, these districts could change, and that last paragraph is intended to provide that outlet for redistricting. There's a specific provision in the charter that spells out how the planning department, sorry, the planning commission formulates the new um, divisions, it goes to the mayor, it's brought to the council, the council approves, it cannot amend, it just approves up or down, and those are the new, uh, essentially the new boundaries of the new district creations. <clears throat> and we, sorry, when we did these, we, we looked at it, and we was like seven, you know, and you got five council districts, right now there's about 700,000 people um, in the county, so if you split it up by the, the way it is right now, there's about 100,000 people would be in each one of the planning districts. And we figured, you know, if the mayor can't find somebody out of 100,000 people in a district, then, you know, there's a problem. So. Well, there may be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> now, Mike, would um, there need to be a resolution done after every um, redistricting to correct the, the, um, the district usually, numbers? It's usually done, if I recall correctly, it's actually usually done by ordinance. Yes, there's a ordinance. redistricting plan that the council has to approve. And so it would encompass this as well for yeah, all purposes. Okay. So the idea is that the planning commission would, they'd be required to basically keep these general regions intact, but also stay on council district lines, right? Correct. Okay. And as this starts getting worked in, the mayor would just need to choose from an unrepresented district with his first appointment and continue with that until all the districts are great. Correct. Thank you. So what would be the enforcement mechanism of either 
um, you know, maybe not here at the beginning is to Dave's point of, you know, as seats come open, you appoint from somewhere that doesn't have representation already. But say they're all represented and, you know, he picks somebody else from, you know, one of these districts instead of, you know, somebody leaves this planning district four, but he or she is the mayor, appoints a second person from district five. Does that nomination just automatically, we may not consider it? That's not a viable nomination. Okay. So it's, it basically doesn't even come up come up from the first floor to stay, it, they, like we can't even consider it. Okay, all right, that's fine, okay. I just wanna make sure. <laughs> so I don't know if it, it already exists for there to be um, diversity in the planning commission when you talk about uh, uh, any type of percentage of, of gender or race. Are those factors included in the... Uh, State law requires that the planning commission um, be reflective of the community as a whole. That's very generic language, but it does have some language to that effect in there. It's implications. And I think it says an opportunity to be more, to help the diversity of the planning commission because you're making sure you get somebody from you know parts of town that don't have but may not typically get representation on there. So I think that's good. And that was kind of my goal, just to make sure the county's represented on the planning commission. You got certain things being done in certain parts of the county. It's easy for a planning commission to say, we don't care if a landfill's going in that part of the county because we don't have anybody from the, that lives out there on this planning commission right. and we don't care. Right. And that's just as simple as it can be. Good job. I like it. Mm -hmm. and, and it's similar, and I don't know if this is the appropriate, but um, BZA. You know, with some of the recent emails that we've gotten to make sure that we don't put people who are, you know, swayed one way or the other, um, something like this could be done. Would that be appropriate to have that here, or does it, where, where can something like that be presented? The, um, if I recall correctly, the BCA, the, the number that we currently have on the BCA I think, let me double check this, but I think state law was changed within the last couple of years to allow a larger number than currently serves. Um, let me double check that before I start spouting it as gospel. Um, but otherwise you would have similar opportunities as here. No further discussion, I renew my motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Bill Passes. E is basically just cleaning up the charter. Uh, we're currently doing this now. The state overrules what is in the current charter, so this just um, complies with what the state has us doing already. Basically, stating that um, um, that the, uh, the the charter currently provides that a vacancy upon the Metropolitan Board of Education is to be filled by the remaining members of the board. However, such vacancies are filled by the local legislative body pursuant to state law. Um, this amendment would revise the charter to render it consistent with the state law. So basically, we can, um, we would appoint, you know, to the Board of Education if somebody leaves. And this, like you said, is this is the current charter is inconsistent with state law, right. and this just makes us consistent with state law. So exactly. this is laying out the same process we're going to be undergoing anyway. Exactly. And while we're on that issue, Mike, does the, do we just get a letter from the Board of Education state, stating that they have a member that has resigned, and then we go through the process of appointing? We have Mr. Pinkston's letter, and if I recall correctly, that designates April 12th as the is his effective date. So I believe the vice mayor is inclined to wait until it's actually a vacancy. And then, because the charter says what it says, it doesn't spell out the, the process. Um, so we would simply go by our rules, 40, 41 to 42, on how we fill vacancies and other scenarios. You'll see a letter from the vice mayor announcing the vacancy, encouraging members to uh, take nominations, submit them on the floor at the next meeting, 
uh, candidates will then come before the rules committee in this room and then be on the floor. And so if he does that April 16th, May 7th, then the May 21st meeting is likely the timeline on that. Okay. Thank you, sir. Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Well, he passes. Any other questions? You may want to take it as amended. Now. Yeah, I would okay. move approval as amended and re-refer to this committee. Please. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, all right. The amendment passes, or the bill resolution passes with all the amendments. And you get 17 minutes to get back to your district. I know, right? Uh, I just wanted to publicly thank you, um, you know, Councilman Cooper and Mendez, especially, and Rosenberg, you guys have been a fantastic asset to this city, and I appreciate all your hard work. Yep. All right, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you.